we are returning from war. The crisis and tens of thousands of black men were drafted into a great struggle for bleeding France and what she means and has meant and will mean to us and humanity and against the threat of German race arrogance. We fought gladly and to the last drop of, of blood for America and her highest ideals. We fought in far off hope for the dominant Southern oligarchy entrenched in Washington. We fought in bitter resignation for the America that represents and gloats in lynching, disenfranchisement. For this is the hateful upturning and mixing of things. We were forced by vindictive fate to fight also. But today, we return. We return from the slavery of uniform, which the world's madness demanded us to don to the freedom of civil garb. We stand again to look America squarely in the face and call a spade a spade. We sing, this country of ours, despite all its better souls, have done and dreamed, is yet a shameful land. It lynches. And lynching is barbarism of a degree of contemptible nastiness unparalleled in human history. Yet for 50 years, we have lynched two Negroes a week, and we have kept this upright through the war. It disenfranchises its own citizens. Disenfranchisement is the deliberate theft and robbery of the only protection of poor against rich and black against white. The land that disenfranchises its citizens and calls itself a democracy lies and knows it lies. It encourages ignorance. It has never really tried to educate the Negro. A dominant minority does not want Negroes educated. It wants servants, dogs, whores, and monkeys. And when this land allows a reactionary group by its stolen political power to force as many black folk into these categories as it possibly can, it cries in contemptible hypocrisy. They threaten us with degeneracy. They cannot be educated. It steals from us. It organizes industry to cheat us. It cheats us out of our land. It cheats us out of our labor. It confiscates our savings. It reduces our wages. It raises our rent. It steals our profit. It taxes us without representation. It keeps us consistently and universally poor, and then feeds us on charity and derides our poverty. It insults us. It has organized a nationwide and laterally a worldwide propaganda of deliberate and continuous insult and defamation of black blood wherever found. It decrees that it shall not be possible in travel, nor residence, work, nor play, education, nor instruction for a black man to exist without tacit or open acknowledgement of his inferiority to the dirtiest white dog. And it looks upon any attempt to question or even discuss this dogma as arrogance, unwarranted assumption, and treason. This is the country to which soldiers of democracy return. This is the fatherland for which we fought, but it is our fatherland. It was right for us to fight. The faults of our country are our faults. Under similar circumstances, we would fight again. But by the God of heaven, we are cowards and jackasses if now that the war is over, we do not marshal every ounce of our brain and brawn to fight a sterner, longer, more unbending battle against the forces of hell in our own land. We return. We return from fighting. We return fighting. Make way for democracy. We saved it in France, and by the great Jehovah, we'll save it in the United States of America. Or know the reason why.